Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna be looking at a few previous year questions from medicine. So let's start. Nasal polyps are frequently linked to intrinsic asthma, extrinsic asthma, brittle asthma or none of the above. So the correct answer to this is intrinsic asthma. I'll quote a direct line from Harrison's here since that is the main book. So it says that these patients with non-atopic or intrinsic asthma usually show later onset of disease and commonly have concomitant nasal polyps. I've even added the reference here, so if you want, you can go and read more about it. But coming back to our question, our correct answer is option A. Now, which of the following is not an age-defining illness? Is it oral candidiasis, encephalopathy attributed to HIV, invasive cervical cancer, or mycobacterium tuberculosis of any site. So again, I've taken this snippet out of Harrison's, which is an important table, and the question actually came from this table. So going through our options here, you can see that cervical cancer of the invasive variety is there, which means it is an AIDS-defining opportunistic illness. Now, encephalopathy attributed to HIV is also there, as well as mycobacterium tuberculosis of any site. But if you'll pay attention to the top part of the table, you will see that candidiasis of bronchi, trachea and lungs as well as candidiasis of esophagus is there. But in our question, the option was oral candidiasis, which is wrong. So coming back to our question, our correct answer is option A. Next, which of the following statements regarding Kent bundle is false? It is faster than AB nodal pathway. It leads to prolonged QRS duration it leads to short PR interval or it is slower than AB nodal pathway. Now I love these type of questions because as you can see option A and option D are totally opposite which means that one of these answers is correct because if you see the bundle of Kent can't be faster and slower at the same time right. So automatically we can eliminate option B and C. And now let's see what this bundle of Kent is exactly. So it is an accessory electrical pathway in the heart which bypasses the AV node, important to remember. And this can lead to abnormal electrical conduction. So in this image, you can see that dark blue colored arrow. This is a normal pathway which goes through the AV node. But here the dotted line you can see that this is the bundle of Kent which is an accessory pathway. Now you must be knowing that normally the conduction through AV node is slow. This is called as the AV nodal delay. Now you tell me if there is an other pathway which is bypassing this slow AV nodal pathway, is that pathway going to be faster or slower than AV node? It is going to be faster, right? So in this question, since it was asking the false statement, so the correct option here is option D. Now syndrome caused by thrombosis of posterior inferior cerebellar artery is Wallenberg syndrome, inferior alternating syndrome, medial medullary syndrome or Dejerin syndrome. So the correct option here is Wallenberg syndrome. Let's study a bit more about this. So it is also known as the lateral medullary syndrome. And the main point here is that ischemia and damage in the lateral medulla is seen here due to blockage of most commonly the vertebral artery or the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So the correct option here is option A. Now, serpiginous ulcers of the distal esophagus is seen in herpes, acid, cytomegalovirus or candida. So again, this is a fact-based question which you'll have to memorize. The correct option here is cytomegalovirus. Again, I'll quote a direct line from Harrison's which says, Endoscopically, cytomegalovirus lesions appear as serpiginous ulcers in an otherwise normal mucosa, particularly in the distal esophagus. So another point here is that, and even in the question you can see, that distal esophagus was mentioned. So remember this because who knows, in the next exams, they might ask this question that where are the serpiginous ulcers of cytomegalovirus seen? So the correct answer is distal esophagus. So correct option is C. The most commonly involved joint in septic arthritis is shoulder, knee, hip or elbow. So what is septic arthritis? So here the most common cause of this arthritis is staph aureus. There is very intense pain on motion of the affected joint and swelling and fever is also seen. And the most commonly involved joint is the knee. But also remember that other joints are also involved like shoulders, hips and phalanges. 
and shoulders and hips were also given in the options but the correct answer is knee coming back our correct option is b now if a woman donates a kidney to her son this will be an example of isograft autograft xenograft or allograft so you just have to memorize a few definitions here which is pretty easy so isograft is when an organ is transplanted from a donor who is genetically identical to the recipient as seen in identical twins autograft is when a tissue or an organ is transplanted from one part of the body to an other part of the same body allograft is when a tissue is transplanted from one person to another person and this is our correct answer and xenograft finally is when an organ or a tissue is transferred from one type of species to another type of species so coming back our correct option is d now osborn j waves are seen in hypothermia hypokalemia hypercalcemia or hyponatremia so the correct option here is option a which is systemic hypothermia so systemic hypothermia leads to prolongation of repolarization and a convex elevation of the j point this convex elevation is called the osborn wave so in this ecg you can see this abnormal wave here which is called the osborn wave this ecg is actually of a patient who was 81 years old and they found that his temperature was 31.9 degrees celsius coming back our correct option is a now which of the following is incorrect about deep venous thrombosis clinical assessment is highly reliable mostly bilateral some cases directly present as pulmonary thromboembolism or most common clinical presentation is pain and tenderness in the calf so for the diagnosis we actually use the wells criteria or wells score which shows us that clinical assessment is reliable so we can remove the first option automatically now calf swelling is seen here as well as unilateral pitting edema so both of these points were actually given in the question if we will come back so clinical assessment yes it is highly reliable mostly bilateral no it is mostly unilateral some cases directly present as pulmonary thromboembolism is also true and the most common clinical presentation is pain and tenderness in the calf this is also true in fact we saw that this was one of the criteria listed in the score so our correct answer is option b now final question which cardiac chamber enlargement is noticed in case of mitral stenosis is it right atrium right ventricle left atrium or left ventricle so it is pretty easy if you know the basics in mitral stenosis what happens is the blood from the left atrium is not able to come in the left ventricle due to this the blood will start to accumulate in the left atrium and to accommodate this large amount of blood the left atrium will enlarge or in other words the left atrial hypertrophy will be seen so our correct option here is again option c that's it for this video if you have any doubts so please leave them in the comments or you can message me on instagram anytime the link to my instagram is in the description thank you